What's going on, guys? It's Mr. DEBT, Joe Law from the Money Etiquette Group. Man, I just got finished watching Us, the movie, and I have to talk about it, okay? It's, this is a movie that's perfectly down my lane. When we talk about finances, we talk about economic issues, social issues. You know I do that all the time, but I have to talk about this first. This is spoiler-free, this part. I have to talk about it first in reference to Jordan Peele as a genius when it comes to being an executive producer because he plays on us. OK, this man spent maybe 20 to 30 million dollars to make this movie. You're talking about three or four sets. It reminds you of uh, Friday or even you could say the Blair Witch Project back, back in the day. This is a low budget movie. OK, this isn't a big special effects movie. It's a lot of acting. I'm sure they paid the actors well, but nevertheless, they didn't spend much, but they're going to make hundreds of millions on this film. Why? Because Jordan Peele understands who we are today as opposed to 30, 20, or even 10 years ago. Okay, we are a people who like to come to conclusions based on limited information. And that's the lesson. That's one of the lessons in this movie that you shouldn't make quick judgments based on limited information. And what happens is he plays on us in our emotions of who we are from a mindset because Americans do that all the time, okay? We make assumptions about everyone based on limited information because of the social media age. And Jordan Peele plays perfectly into that. Now, what he also plays perfectly into when it comes to us is our need for good guys and bad guys because it goes in that part two. It goes into that too, talking about, okay, well, we're going to assume this about these people or these people or that people because we think they're good. We think they're bad, but in actuality, no one's good or bad. And that's the ultimate lesson of the movie. But Jordan Peele, again, his genius comes in when you build that level of intrigue into your film and you don't spend a lot of money, especially in this culture where we share everything on social media. We talk about it a lot. He's creating a cult classic phenomenon right now okay most people wait to say oh this is going to be a cult classic no this movie will be spoken about for 20 to 30 years because he kind of left open the opportunity for you to put in your interpretation and by doing so it creates dialogue that can go on continually you'll have so many people that take so many different things and ideas from this film that they'll talk about it for a long time and argue about it and even put it on social media similar to what i'm doing which gains more exposure for a film that only costs probably 20 to 30 million to make so again he's a genius as an executive producer just for knowing how to spend a little bit of money play on who we are today and what would intrigue us kind of like if uh who shot jr came out today you know, you have a little mystery behind it. If you put some mystery behind it, you know, the Homer Simpson, uh, I mean, uh, the Simpsons episode of Who Shot Mr. Burns, when you do that, okay, you spend limited money, but you do it in today's society with how we use social media, man, you're going to make a lot of money, Jordan Peele. Much applause to you for having a great idea and understanding how to play people and people's emotions, okay? So that's the spoiler free version. Here's my spoiler interpretation, okay? When you look at the movie, it's about U.S. history, okay? It's about who we are as a people. You talk about a people that forgot who they were, okay, which was represented by Lupita's character, a people who forgot who they were because they were in such a race to escape poverty, to escape being at the bottom, that they were willing to take out anybody else to avoid it, and they weren't willing to hand it, put their hand back and pull up the people who they left behind. So it was like, okay, you started off in a bad position, but you forgot who you were because you wanted to reach new heights. You wanted to be comfortable above being above where those people were. That's who Lapita is and that's who America is. If you look at our history, it's a it's a repeated history of people, uh, individuals that will come up from a group, a group of poor people and forget the poor people and then create a new class system or be a part of a higher class system and then also try to avoid becoming in contact with people from the past. So it was a continual building on the efforts of those who are lesser in your mind. And even if you escape that, forgetting that you're a part of that, not reaching back to help them, but to move beyond them because you want to continue to grow. Okay. The colonizers, the European settlers did it. They forgot that they were rejects. They forgot that they were the ones trying to escape second class citizenship and poverty and classism in Europe and decided we're going to come over here and we're above another class of people, the aboriginals and the Native Americans. We forget about that. Okay, let's forget about them. Let's bring in slavery. Let's bring in black slaves and African people um, and 
even take over some people who are brown that are already here because you guys don't deserve this and we need this to make sure that we elevate, okay? It's not about, we were never on your level. You were on a lower level, so we don't owe anything to you. You need to find your own way up, okay? People do that, but in the same time, this is happening. People are acting like, and these people who are, that are doing that are acting like in their history, they're not killers. So what I'm saying is, when that generation grows and grows and grows and grows, what happens, just like in the movie, you saw Lupita's character and her son, and her son start to realize who she really was, was a killer. It goes back to, in U.S. history, okay, the dominant culture is always someone that's been a killer, okay? It comes out from time to time, and when it really comes out, our children, which is the white and European, I will say, uh, children of today, the generation of today, they start to see their parents and say, man, they start to see their grandparents, they start to see their ancestors and say, man, you guys are really killers, you guys are evil, but I can't escape the system either because you built it to benefit me. So similar to Lupita's son, um, her character's son, you're sitting there realizing that your ancestor, your mom, your grandparents, they're killers, but you benefit from their killing. So now you kind of take that on as being okay. You, you, you don't really look at the lesser as a disenfranchised people you start participating in the killing even though you don't feel the same way as your parent because you see the system. You're like, this is what has to happen in the system. It's for my advantage. So who am I to break the system? That's what us is. It's always a group saying, who am I to break the system because it helped get me where I got, except for the people on the bottom. The people on the bottom are like, we're gonna break the system because it's taking advantage of us. However, you had a person from the bottom escape it and not reach back to help all those from the bottom. That is us. That is America. Think about this also. How many people were actually uh, sad when the white family got killed by their white counterparts? You know, when the rich white yuppies, the ones that were, you know, uh, talking about, oh, your black child is weird and this and that, who were kind of ignorant and pompous. I didn't see a lot of sympathy when they got killed because there was a lot of assumptions of, of who they were as a person based on limited information. We said, you know what, they deserve to die. It's okay if they die. And that again is the point of the entire movie when we talk about classism. If you don't see yourself in other people, then you're gonna kill those people. And if that means that you kill those people for, your, for you to advance, it is what it is. Nevertheless, tell me what you guys think, because I think I could go so much deeper. This is so much about U.S. history. I see it, classism. I see about how people have a history of taking advantage of other people and killing off other people and saying, this is not us, this is you. But in actuality, it's all of us. It's interesting to see that. That is America. But what do you guys think? Okay, tell me what you think in the comment section, because I'm interested to hear what you have to say.